Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ronaldo Moore with PPG. And if you are new to the channel, where have you been? Come on. Please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you'll know when these videos are dropping. Today's topic, it's all about plumbing. I am doing a plumbing final on a renovated home. So I want to kind of take you with me and show you what I look for, how I conduct a plumbing final. So with that, let's get this thing started and I will see you again on the next one. Back. I am doing a plumbing final on a renovated home. They went through, the contractor went through and gutted, pretty much gutted this whole house. They demoed a lot of the interior walls, came back with new walls, new wiring, uh, some new plumbing. I am doing a plumbing final on this renovated house. All right, let's get started. I'm in the kitchen here, and the first thing I check is to make sure that the water is running. And we do have running water. I'll let that run for a little bit. Take a peek up under the sink. Check for any leaks. I don't, don't see any leaks. Make sure that the, the water hammer rester is present for the dishwasher supply line. You got your hot and cold water shutoff valves. As far as the dishwasher, which is over to the left here, make sure that drainage hose is a, attached up high. Probably can't see that. Uh, but it is, and it it is connected to the garbage disposal. All right, along with that video, I've attached this this chart. If you have a two compartment kitchen sink with a garbage disposal, uh, this diagram really shows you what what to look for when you're doing an inspection under the kitchen sink. Just follow along through items one through four and it shows the, the maximum distance uh, between the garbage disposal and the fixture drainage line, the maximum um, distance of a tailpiece and the maximum distance between each compartment sink as far as the depth is concerned so just follow along with this diagram along with that video and you should be fine now with this particular diagram if you ever come across a situation where you have a studer vent or a air admittance valve up under the kitchen sink I've included this diagram to show what the minimum distance is from that trap arm to the top of the air admittance valve or the inlet area of the air admittance valve. There's a minimum distance um, and this diagram shows that it's got to be minimum of four inches that trap drainage arm off of the P-trap. All right, this is a little half bath. And you know, at, at this point, all you're really checking for are, are leaks. Everything is already covered. So, you know, I'll go and run, run the water, check up under the laboratory, make sure there are no leaks. Go over and flush the toilet. Check for any leaks around the shutoff valve, around the tank. Make sure it's sealed and caught at the base of the water closet. All right, this is a master bathroom. Got your dual vanities there. Got your tub, shower combination. And like I said, you know, I typically just, just run the water. You know, make sure there are no leaks around the shower valve, no leaks around the shower head, and this particular setup, now if this were a two handle 
bathtub setup, I would need a mixing valve. You would need a mixing valve here as well. This is not, this is considered your, your mixing valve right here. Typically they'll, they'll put those mixing valves under the, under the sink, on the laboratory. If I can get it open. But uh, like I said, I'll, I'll just take and run the water and just check for any leaks up under the, up under the sink. Everything looks good there, hot and cold. Shut off valves, P trap, and everything looks good there. This is the toilet room. Turn some light on here, and I'll just come over and flush the toilet. Check for any leaks around the base, around the tank, around the shutoff valve. Make sure that the base is caulked and sealed. Okay, now this particular house, it has two, two master bathrooms. So, and like I said, at this point, everything's covered. I'm just really checking for, for leaks. Um, that's your dual vanities right there. You know, turn on the water. Those are, uh, those are pretty nice bowls there. Uh, you know, and just check up under the, check up under this to see if there are any leaks. No, um, don't notice any leaks. Got your P trap there. No leaks up under that one. Uh, and there's your water closet right there. I'll come over and flush it. Check for any leaks at the shutoff valve. Make sure it's caulked and sealed around the base. No leaks at the tank. That's the bathtub. You know, just really turn on all the fixtures, to be honest. Make sure everything's. Things are working. Oops. <laughs> um, and that's the shower. And I won't turn that on for the sake of this video because I'll probably get my, <laughs> my camera wet. But I've already turned it on and tested it. So. Now this house has a basement. So let's go down there and check out and see what, what kind of plumbing fixtures are down there. All right, I'm down here on the low level, down in the basement. And there is a little bar sink here. And like I said, I'll just, just go through, man. Just turn on every fixture. And just really check the leaks. Um, and that is a long, tailpiece there <laughs> for that sink. I had to check, I had to pull out my tape measure and check the, the length on that tailpiece. I think the max is about about 24 inches if I'm not mistaken, but I'll check that. But there are no leaks, so we're moving on to the, to the next one. All right, here is another half bathroom. And like I said, I just really just kind of go through the same process. Make sure, turn on every fixture. Make sure there are no leaks up under the sink. Flush the toilet. Make sure there are no leaks at the shutoff valve, at the tank. Make sure that the base is caulked and sealed. All right, this particular house has a sump pump down on the lower level. That's what you're in between all of the paint cans <laughs> that they've stored. It's it's down, it's it's under there, but uh check for to make sure that the check valve is behind the shutoff valve. Sometimes some plumbers get that mixed up. It's the check, then the shutoff valve. There's a hub drain. Typically would want a air gap. These are the relief lines from the water heater coming in to drain at this hub drain. I typically want about an inch or so of a of an air gap right there. And here's another bathroom. Jesus, this, this house never ends. Um, and really, it's just a, the same process. Go through and turn on all the all the fixtures. Make sure there, there are no leaks. There's a full-size shower, it's a nice size shower. 
Got your water closet. Got your laboratory there. All right, let's check out the mechanical room or mechanical closet. Uh, there's, your, there's your gas furnace there. And over to the left are two gas water heaters. Now down here in Georgia, depending on how many, there's, there's a chart that we use. And depending on how many bathrooms and how many bedrooms you have, you need to have a certain size or a certain capacity in gallons um, as far as the water heat is concerned. So um, there are two 50 gallon gas water heaters. I think the first hour rating on each one is uh, about 75, I think. So there is definitely more than enough capacity for this size house. Uh, check for type B vent connectors on, on this particular on these two water heaters. Make sure that the expansion tank is secure. Can't just have that resting on the water line anymore. Make sure that the hot water lines in an unfinished area, make sure those are insulated as well. And those TMP relief lines that I showed you back at the hub drain, these are from the, the two water heaters here. They run along the wall of this mechanical room and they go through to the next room on the other side and they drop into that that hub drain. Make sure there's a sediment trap for the gas line. There's one here on, the, on this water heater. There's another one. Probably can't see it. Sorry about the, the lighting. And there's another P trap. I'm sorry, sediment trap for that, that furnace. And there's shut off valves all over the place so we look good here all right let's briefly or let's talk about the the laundry area this is a laundry area here it's a little small area i typically check to make sure that there that the water hammer resters are present um, always remember any quick closing valve requires a water hammer rester dishwasher supply lines wash machine supply lines and most most ice maker supply lines but typically check you got hot and cold water line the water hammer resters are here and present as far as plumbing and that's really it and some wash machine rooms or laundry areas they could have a, a floor drain like i said this is a renovated home and this one does not. So let's go outside and check the, the hose bibs. All right, I'm outside now. And I'm looking for, for two, minimum two, two hose bibs. There's one with a vacuum breaker fitting. That's what you need. And let's go find the other one. And this is where the other one is, in, in the front yard area. So we do have two, two hose bibs. And that is pretty much it for a plumbing final on this renovated home. There's still a lot that the, that the contractor, that they have to come back to finish. I think the mechanical and the electrical may not quite be ready, but the plumbing, as far as plumbing, that's pretty much it on, on this one. <laughs>